In this video, we will look at the equipment used for SFM, how to pick a surface or object, and the methods of taking photographs for SFM. The key piece of equipment for SFM is of course the camera. You can use pretty much any camera for SFM, and nearly any lens, as long as it does not have too much distortion. It is even possible to use your mobile phone to take photographs for SFM. We typically use a 24-70mm to lens of high quality, and depending on the size of the panel, vary the zoom. It is possible to use single lenses as well, and we have had success with the very popular Canon 50mm 1.8 lens. To get the best photographs you want to be away from the extremes of the f-stop range, i.e. around 4 to 11 for the best results. Any lower and you start to get issues with depth of field, any higher and you start to get grainy photographs. Shutter speed is not too important here but the faster the better, as you risk motion blur with longer exposure times. We tend to use around 2 to 500 depending on lighting. ISO should be as low as possible, preferably between 100 and 400 to avoid graining. Higher quality cameras can manage with higher ISOs, but it's largely about trial and error. Avoid lenses that have too low a focal length, or have special features like fisheye, as these will distort the photographs and can cause problems in reconstruction phases of Agisoft. It is often beneficial to dereference SFM reconstructions with target points. Target points can be created in Agisoft and printed and placed around or on the surface of the object, but it should be noted they will obscure the area that you are photographing. Target points can also be used for large-scale aerial reconstructions, for example reconstructions of archaeological sites. In the past, we have used bright purple plates with targets drawn on them that were gereferenced with GPS. This allowed us to accurately geolocate the model and the digital elevation map that was created. SFM doesn't work on every type of surface. You should avoid reflective and transparent objects like glass. It also won't work very well on completely flat, smooth objects as it will not be able to pick up any reference points from the photographs. We have found that although there is some tolerance for wet surfaces, it is always better to make sure the surfaces are dry before shooting. Objects and surfaces with too many complex concave or folded shapes or too many small details in them might not work as there needs to be photographs from every angle or you will get holes. We always take a brush with us to every site as it is nearly always the case that the rock art is covered in leaves and debris and needs to be cleaned. We use a wooden brush with hard bristles as this works the best and won't damage the rock surface. There are a few general rules for SFM photography that should be adhered to for a successful shoot. More photos are better than less, but it is also possible to have too many. There should be a 60% overlap in every direction, more if you're doing aerial photography. Every part of an object should be in at least two photos, preferably more. The object, or part of it, should be the majority of the focus of the photograph. You should not have the whole object in any of the photographs, although it is a good idea to take some so you have some reference photographs. When taking photographs for a flat surface, the general idea is that you want to have complete photographic coverage of the entire surface. All of the photographs should be taken perpendicular to the surface. Do not stand in a single position and rotate the camera, as this will cause issues and distortion in the final model. While you will inevitably have areas that have grass or other overhanging items depending on what you are shooting, it is entirely possible to crop them out of your photographs in Agisoft. If you are working on a large flat surface like rock art, it is important that you make sure that you avoid taking hundreds of photographs with your feet in the frame, as you will have to crop each of them out by hand. At the end of the shoot, you should end up with photographs that are aligned in uniform rows facing the surface that you are photographing. Objects are a lot harder to photograph for SFM, as there are multiple edges and corners that must be heavily photographed. If it is possible, it is best to have a neutral background. While it is still possible to shoot in an environment without a neutral background, it will be harder to master photos manually in Agisoft, as you will spend more time searching for the edges of your object. Starting with the object in the middle, you want to photograph around the object, making sure you have large amounts of overlap in every direction. Pay particular attention to the corners, as this is the area where matching is most likely to fail. 
You'll also need to do this for the top and the bottom of the object you are photographing. Remember that more photographs are better than less. In this video, we have looked at how to pick a surface or object to record, camera settings you should use, considerations for both methods, and the methodology of recording flat surfaces and objects.